going to talk about uh, astrophotography and, and auto guiding problem uh, and, and what type of technology is available out there for that and a bit also about uh, a new option we have in the field uh, which is auto guiding using an axis guiding system. So the next question is why guiding? When you do astrophotography uh, you have to be sure the target you are imaging stays still during the time of the uh, imaging process. So it's challenging for that matter because you will see later on then the accuracy for, you, know, you need is in a range of a fraction of arc second. And you don't need much in any, you know. So let's see what we can do to actually auto guide. The most common way, I think the most popular way, is uh, using a guide scope. So the guide scope is what it is. It's another scope on top of the first scope, attached with some type of brackets. And of course, uh, because most likely you use a, a, a shorter focal length scope, uh, you will have a wider field of view, which is interesting to find a guide star. A bright guide star. So for that matter is interesting. The drawback though with guide scope is flexure. It's not flexure of the, dry, of the guide scope for itself, could be, the, could be the guide scope, it could be the focuser, but most likely the relationship between the guide scope and the main scope. Because the main scope has a very long focal length and, short, and the guide scope has a short focal length and all those optical axes must remain aligned for a long time. And if you do some math, you can see, and that's pretty much what you can see in reality, then a 11 inch aluminum SCT scope with an 80 millimeter guide scope, which is a typical um, setup, uh, will have up to 18 microns of flexure, which means 8 arc seconds in this condition, which is way more than what you want. Of course, it may happen over time if you are lucky, but it's not always like that. On top of that, you may have motion of mirror with a CT scope, so this type of problem. Off-axis guiders solve this problem. And that's quite old technology. Because if you use the same optical train, the same optic system, and if it's well made, I mean, you can find poor equipment everywhere, but if it's well made, you shouldn't have any problem of flexure anymore. So no flexure, that's the right uh, approach, though the drawback is a small field of view because it's off-axis and because the chips become bigger and bigger, you will eventually have to look at your guide star in this donut shape field of view here. This is an example for a two-inch diameter uh, uh, back focus, uh, sorry, back, uh, visual back. You see a standard APS-C chip, which is what you have on a DSLR typically. But then you will have to look at the uh, guide star in this yellow uh, donuts because you have a pickup prism looking at uh, this place. You don't want to cast any shadow on your Im imager. So you are off axis, this is the name, right? And the other drawback for some scope at least uh, is you may have a lot of uh, distortion. A coma will be a typical uh, problem and you see the star, the guide star, will look like that. More like a UFO than a star. Yeah. And makes the problem even more complex uh, to find a good guide star in terms of, of enough uh, energy on a small area. There is another way also uh, to do the same thing, but in a more compact uh, solution. They are the self-guided camera. There is only one place where you can buy them, is the company named Santa Barbara Imaging Group, SBAG, because they have a patent of that, so they are the only one who have uh, self-guided camera so far. I think the patent will really expire soon though. But So what they do is basically provide you uh, two chips, one for imaging and another one of axis for uh, uh, guiding on the same body. So it's more compact, it's rigid, it's a nice solution. So but it has the same drawback though than the off-axis guider because you have to look at your star in the same position around here. It's even a bit worse I would say because most off-axis guiders have a capability to tip, 
tilt a bit the prism to increase a bit the field of view. Here you don't have this option. And another thing I didn't say is for both, you have also probably most of uh, Fox's guider and for sure self guided camera, you have to rotate them to look for the guide star. Which means you may have focus issue when you rotate. Uh, and you may have also to redo your flat frame. You know, the flat frame are frames you take in, in a uniform source of light, like you know, uh, in the sky or just after sunset or something like that, uh, to take care of uh, any vignetting, any type of variation in the optical system to cancel it when, when you process later on. If you rotate, then you have to do it again. 